So firstly, I'll start while this is coming up on the screen and saying, it might be cool to be a geek in today's world. In the 90s, it was not. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, in terms of what, I guess, uh, qualifies packaging geek, uh, Lil Packaging is my brother and I's company. I'm Fred Lil, my brother Barry Lil. He had a dream of working at NASA as a degree with uh, a degree in physics and astrophysics, so completely wasted in packaging, but there needs to be somebody who loves packaging, right? So um, if I go back to, uh, yeah, this uh, presentation is really to uh, throw a bit of a curveball on today's uh, conference in that uh, a lot of uh, energy is being focused on uh, delivery of groceries by truck uh, in crates of we weekly shopping loads in a one hour slot. It's just, uh, we would like to remind retailers that actually, um, if you can squeeze as much as possible through somebody's letterbox, the point at which it goes through their door is actually then their responsibility and their, it's deemed a successful delivery. So, um, in terms of uh, names that have achieved this, we'll go through this, uh, some client uh, case studies uh, in the next section. But uh, one of the reasons I do a lot of these conferences is to fight uh, the pigeonhole of just doing these, it's called the Lil Envelope of Red Lil. Uh, and uh, I mean, sometimes it's, it's nice to have a pigeonhole, but um, actually it's far more than just uh, an envelope that we uh, help clients assist with uh, in getting through that large letter. So. Um, um, something that's quite uh, probably on other people's radar right now, IMRG, the kind of um, uh, the Association for Internet Retailing, the editor at the bottom here, Andy Mulkai, uh has actually put together an equation for e-commerce that we rather like, saying that, uh, if you look at the bottom of the slide, uh, e-commerce value, their profit, uh, is about maximizing sales. Um, Green, green, and then minimising buying costs, operational costs, uh, and marketing. Um, but actually, in terms of what you guys as online retailers have said uh, throughout 2017, is that actually uh, there are five reasons particularly why packaging is on uh, everyone's agenda more than ever before. And, and number one is enhancing the customer experience. Uh, the power of vlogs um, has, I mean, uh, actually, um, the head of marketing of Google has said actually the power of blog uh, or blogging is more powerful than any other form of free marketing. Uh, if you can make that uh, unboxing experience special for one of your consumers, uh, they will blog or vlog it or put it on social media. Um, second topic of uh, lessening volumetric weight, I'll come on to that. Uh, and Amazon term peak employment avoidance. Uh, I love that, uh, that use of, of term in that uh, actually if you're using smart, uh, fast, efficient packaging in peak, it can often mean that you don't need to perhaps recruit the, the 50 additional staff that you might forecast for in peak. Um, but let's move on to uh, the actual uh, bit about um, uh, avoiding perished goods. Now, like I said, uh, like Ian said, on each of these tables, I encourage you to eat the produce inside of this Hotel Chocolat uh, box. It is our demonstration to you guys that um, actually, um, from a consumer expectation, uh, this is about as high level as uh, e-commerce packaging gets right now. In fact, we're entering it into the e-commerce awards this year. Um, but um, um, in terms of what's clever about this particular piece of packaging, if you open inside the box, the actual tissue paper is an adhesive tissue paper that's actually suspending the product within the box so it doesn't need all the unnecessary void fill and bubble wrap and uh, packings inside that. Um, but yeah, when I say it's topical, the Hotel Chocolate chocolates inside, I've deliberately purchased, they do perish at the end of this month. <laughs> so uh, if you don't finish them now, unfortunately the event organizers will have to before the end of the month. <laughs> Um, but we do encourage uh, clients to squeeze as much through uh, a consumer's letterbox as possible. Uh, in fact, there's a small disclaimer in here that Lil does not promote squeezing of any animal through a letterbox. Just something that we, uh, <laughs> and using an image like that, like to put with it. So um, uh, there's more uniformity to letterboxes than people realise. Um, the biggest thing being, right at the top of this, I know there's a lot of uh, text on this slide here, 
then actually over 98% of UK letterboxes are one and a half inches high. So actually, if you can have an item of packaging, excuse me, I don't know why this keeps skipping on to the next one, I'll keep jumping it back. Um, that actually cases like Bloom and Wild, where the box is deliberately designed to be 37 millimeters high, will always have a 98% success rate of getting straight through that letterbox. Um, and more interestingly, generally speaking, there are only three different widths of letterbox in the UK. So there's um, eight inch as uh, the narrowest, 10 inch, uh, which is most common, and then the 12 inch wide version, which tends to be more common in um, modern housing. But um, uh, while it's best practice uh, for internet retailers to focus on the most common 10 inch uh, letterbox, which is 254 millimeters, might be uh, relate that to the Royal Mail large letter tariff, their large letter is 350 millimeters by 250, and that 250 is to glide straight through that most common uh, letterbox. But um, the elite internet retailers that want to optimize as close to the 100% as possible uh, are focusing on the 8 inch letterbox, uh, 203 millimeters wide, which, if you look at the top right of that screen, um, gives an example of the <coughs> Bloom and Wild box itself is uh, 185. So, um, uh, yeah, there are occasions less than 1%, there are some 6 inch wide. Um, I mean, I'm talking pre-Victorian era here of uh, letter boxes, but um, uh, we're actually in the middle of commissioning a research into 20,000 uh, UK letter box sizes, uh, and this is just initial data that's coming through from that. So we hope that that'll be complete by the spring of this year. Uh, so um, moving on to going further than just getting through someone's letter box, getting into the large letter tariff, which is the lowest cost mailing rate. Now, actually, um, we have, uh, 2017 was our higher than ever, in fact, uh, we can forecast it, uh, incoming inquiries from startup businesses with ideas of putting uh, products that you would never, or items you would never have thought possible to fit through a letterbox or a large letter. Um, in fact, um, uh, actually, if I pause here for a second, is there a way that I can get this to freeze <laughs> and not roll on every time? Um, uh, but uh, anyway, if you forgive me for keep spinning back. So, um, uh, yeah, while uh, health and fitness is ever popular and people are looking at protein supplements, actually uh, natural proteins, uh, I was talking earlier this morning, are becoming increasingly popular for people to order subscription steaks or lean chicken breast, in which case these kind of items, you can well imagine, are possible to fit through these lower level uh, tariffs, a bit like the, the Gray's box. Um, but the, the brief that we had from uh, Cadbury was to actually uh, create what is typically known as their Christmas selection box. Um, for, uh, uh, for those of you who are unaware, it's like a, a purple box with a black vacuum inlay with you know, 10 different uh, Christmas selection items in there. To have a similar format like that going through the post as a retail product under 9.99 or under 10 pounds rather um, but what they wanted to focus on was getting to the lowest possible weight band within this large letter category so although in a royal mail they have the under 100 grams under 250 grams under 500 and under 750 their goal was really to try and get under the 250 if possible um, we uh, began a kind of a, a laborious task of actually um, uh, measuring every single cavalry product um, to find out the, the bars that weren't possible to squeeze through a 25 millimeter letter slot. I seem to remember, um, yeah, um, double decker was a problem for a number of reasons, um, because of course as well you can't have 10 double deckers, uh, 50 grams each, squeezing through that, that lower tariff. Um, the result was this uh, package here that if you um, haven't seen it before, uh, that they do not only for direct to consumer but also um, corporate gifting too. Uh, but it still has that same feel of a uh, Cadbury open the hinge lid selection box. Um, but most importantly, uh, at a price point, they were able to uh, undercut anyone else in that field. So uh, moving on to volumetric weight. Now, um, uh, I would say more than the, uh, the majority of our internet retailers are really focused on this this year. Um, 
for those of you who've watched like Blue Planet, uh, the BBC documentary series this year, public awareness of plastics being um, uh, massively frowned upon has never been higher. Um, in fact, it was recently published uh, about two months ago that only one in 400 coffee cups are actually recyclable in the UK. It's a staggering fact when you consider day-to-day -day sales of uh, takeaway coffee in the UK are between 4 million and 10 million units every day, and only one in 400 of those are actually recycled. Um, so uh, awareness from a consumer point of view of using things that are green, whether it be in the final mile delivered by uh, bicycle, which we've heard of earlier, or um, electric bike, uh, it's also uh, stretching the absolute limitations of what can be done from paper and board. Uh, we were actually given a, uh, I think it was an, only a joking inquiry about two months ago about actually uh, somebody wanted to put raw poultry directly in a box. And uh, there's certain degrees of which the primary packaging with the actual vacuum sealed plastic is still required of the product uh, for hygiene reasons, but um, still the interest is there nonetheless. Um, in terms of, uh, without wishing to you bore you with too much of the science of the volumetric weight, most international uh, dispatches are priced purely on uh, volumetric weight. And I've got some examples here if, uh, for those that you can see. Um, just some uh, ideas of what uh, variable depth packaging or what impact variable depth packaging can have on the volumetric weight. So actually uh, we have two identical boxes here um, that have this um, uh, variable depth creasing that can be collapsed to this size and again these are the actual same box but again this one at the top has just been collapsed to that variable depth crease here. Uh, it was talked earlier about the, the Tetris effect uh, of trying to optimise um, volume within uh, the courier network and um, uh, certainly items such as this uh, variable depth box are key to that. Um, this is just some other interesting information. Uh, we're lucky to be one of only two packaging suppliers to the John Lewis Waitrose group uh, and without going too much into each of the uh, factors here it just hammers home that uh, as a consumer survey uh, the number one most important thing for a uh, John Lewis or Waitrose consumer, uh, we've got the um, dark green of John Lewis and the pale green of Waitrose, is still that the item protects, oh sorry, uh, the packaging protects the items purchased. Uh, that figure includes perished goods, so they would, uh, a consumer who uh, had something that was perished is still put in the same bracket as damaged. But uh, I've just put in bold here, um, a recent e-commerce uh, survey revealed that 58% say damaged or perished orders impact the perception of the retailer. Um, and then that's uh, why it's so crucial to get the packaging right. Uh, it's statistics that are hard to repair. Um, that's all I had to say on this uh, letterboxable uh, packaging. Uh, it's just a closing thought to really have a think about what proportion you can maximize of your dispatches through that letterbox. Thank you.